1932, humanity has broadened their search of the skies for other civilizations by adding ears as well as eyes in the form of radio telescopes. We've been tuning in to our skies for almost a century, listening for extraterrestrial signals, transmissions and oddities that may result in a key breakthrough in humanity's ongoing quest to find alien life in the Milky Way. Over the decades, a few strange anomalies have been a cause for some speculation. 1977's discovery of the WOW signal led many to conclude that we may have intercepted a transmission from a faint and distant intelligent civilization, but with no repeats of the signal despite global ongoing efforts, claims of proof of alien life started to wear as thin as that faint flash of radio energy all those years ago. Every unexplained discovery, strange transmission and oddity always seems to end up being nothing more than an error or can be explained by a naturally occurring phenomenon. We've been scanning the skies rigorously, and yet we've never even come close to concrete evidence of intelligent life beyond the Earth. As humanity verges on becoming a spacefaring civilization, we are starting to set our sights on colonizing other planets within our solar system. Back and forward contamination will be key concerns in the run-up to this, with several solar system hotspots that could be major candidates for life in some form or another. But this raises an odd contradiction. If other celestial bodies in our solar system are hotspots for life too, then life may well be very common in and around the universe. And imagine the possibilities with a massive 400 billion stars that make up our own Milky Way galaxy. In the next 1000 years we will try to explore beyond the solar system, and the high level view of colorizing the Milky Way galaxy is looming. We presume this ambition to be universal among all forms of intelligent life, but this raises an interesting question. If intelligent life aims to colonise its host galaxy, then in a massive half a trillion stars that make up our galactic backyard, where are the aliens? Even if not a galactic empire, the lack of even the detection of a radio bubble or any other evidence that something remotely intelligent might exist elsewhere is a little unnerving for some, potentially suggesting a number of possibilities for humanity. Does it mean we're alone? Are we the only intelligent civilization out there? Or are we the first? Maybe we're just unusually advanced and other races exist in far more primitive colonies that are undetectable. Or maybe it means something darker. Maybe it means that there is something that stops a civilization before it gets the chance to jet off around the stars. Some form of barrier to the full advancement of intelligent life. Whatever the case, it's something we may need to start thinking about very soon as we aim to do the same, or we may end up facing extinction sooner than we imagined. No matter what form intelligent life in the universe may take, one thing we consider to be a universal principle for all advanced species is the instinct to explore. This is imperative for technology to advance after all. As a race, we first explored our individual islands and then our planet as a whole. Since then, we've been to the moon and we've sent probes to explore all around our solar system. We've been observing the stars for thousands of years, but in the last century we've added a crucial layer to the search for extraterrestrial intelligence radio telescopes, which we can use to tune in to the background noise of our universe. In the next 20 or 30 years, we hope to send the first humans to land and colonise the planet of Mars, thus being the first time humanity will have ever colonised another planet. Following this, we aim to go higher. We have already highlighted Earth-like planets orbiting nearby stars and we are slowly but surely developing ways to get there. Regardless of politics, race, creed or religion, one ambition we all possess is the drive to explore. We presume this principle to be common of all races in the universe advanced enough to understand their own existence. The next stage of our conquest would be to eventually spread out and explore the entire galaxy, bit by bit, over thousands and millions of years. This would increase our chances of survival from extinction exponentially, whilst bolstering our access to power and natural resources and creating a cosmic empire for a race that could exceed 100 billion people. Of course, we are nowhere near that advanced, but our existence is already very detectable to anyone who might be intelligent around us. For over 100 years, we have been broadcasting a radio bubble, a circular expanding area of our strongest radio broadcasts that have leaked out and are moving away from Earth at more or less the speed of light. As such, our radio bubble is now about 200 light years in diameter, and though this is nothing compared to the size of the Milky Way galaxy, our whispers have passed by several thousand star systems. During this century, we have also sent numerous probes out. Voyager is currently in interstellar space and will pass by many neighbouring stars within the next few million years. In short, you don't need to be a galactic civilization to be detectable to other civilizations in your galaxy. But as nearby civilizations could tune in and listen to our broadcasts, we have been doing the same for them too. With life on Earth being so varied, prevalent and resilient, it's hard to argue that planets extremely similar to ours, such as Kepler-22b, would not be teeming with life. 
Even moons and dwarf planets in our solar system alone have a very real possibility of supporting some form of primitive life in their oceans, and that's just in our solar neighbourhood. With so much potential for life in this region alone, a galaxy with an estimated 400 billion stars and star systems should theoretically be an absolute goldmine for life, and perhaps intelligent life. With 400 billion chances, at least a few intelligent civilizations should have emerged, and with the predictive age of the Milky Way, at least one or two should be older and therefore potentially more advanced than us. Well, we presume this anyway, and it begs the question, why is there no sign of any sort of spacefaring civilization in the Milky Way? We aren't even talking about a galactic civilization, but how come we've never detected a radio bubble, found a probe, seen a ship, or even picked up a recurring intelligent signal? Well, this lack of any evidence of intelligent life is what is known as the Fermi Paradox, and it's a huge mystery of space. We've listened to the skies for many years and our search has even gone extragalactic, but we've never detected even a whisper of another race beyond Earth. Many have created theories on this paradox and they cover a wide range of possible explanations. So what's going on? Why, with such sheer potential for life within such a vast galaxy, have we never detected a single thing? Well, we don't know is the short answer. We only know of life on Earth and have nothing to compare it to in order to understand why the galaxy seems so quiet. We'd have to find life elsewhere to stand a chance of knowing anything. One thing we do seem to heavily base our search on, however, is radio waves. It's no secret that radio observatories have helped make enormous leaps in astrophysics, but to base our entire search for extraterrestrial life on it and draw conclusions from a dead end is impulsive to say the least. Due to hydrogen being the most abundant element in the universe, we expect civilizations to communicate using radio waves, so it's feasible that we would expect to find a radio bubble. However, an advanced radio system might not even leak at all. It may have at some point in its development, but it may have only been detectable from Earth during, say, Jurassic times. These signals also thin out and become undetectable eventually. Perhaps something may be emitting from other galaxies, but we're just too far away to ever know. So, some point to the number of variable factors being the culprit for never having detected a radio bubble. On the same wavelength, pardon the pun, as listening at the wrong time, some people think the age of the universe is simply just too massive to make listening for a century an accurate survey length. While the Milky Way galaxy is old and vast, we may well be very early on, or even the first spacefaring civilization in the galaxy's history. After all, 10 billion years isn't that old if you consider how long it took before humans emerged on Earth some 4 billion years after its creation. Maybe we would have better luck detecting a civilization if we fast forward 8 billion years for when Milkdromeda forms to bring 1.5 trillion stars within audible reach of each other. Some argue that we focus far too much on human-centric life. With so many possibilities for primitive life in our solar system, it's probably pretty likely that organic life exists all over the cosmos, but microbes don't broadcast radio waves. Maybe it is intelligent life that is so improbable that we'd have to travel billions of light years before the right chain of events could occur for intelligent life elsewhere, if it were possible at all. After all, intelligent life on this planet could only be considered a defect in evolution. Humans are, compared to other species, very poorly optimised to Earth conditions. We survived because we were able to use tools, a necessity given we lost our ability to climb. If evolution was fully primed and not defective, we may have fast-tracked to a more primitive but better adapted hunter species. So perhaps 400 billion star systems simply isn't enough chance for intelligent life to emerge, as we know it at least. The odds are slashed even further when you look at how well suited our sun is to support intelligent life. Cosmic rays are zipping all around space across hundreds of thousands of light years. If these rays hit planets like ours, developed and intelligent life simply couldn't evolve or survive. Our sun protects us by ejecting solar winds, which act as a huge ball-like shield around the solar system called the heliosphere. However, these solar winds are also quite capable of destroying us, saved only by Earth's magnetic field, which diverts these particles. So not only would intelligent life have to evolve in such a precise way, you'd also need just the right type of star and a well-optimised magnetic field around the planet before an intelligent species even had a chance of evolving. One thing that is worth pointing out also is that our methods of searching could be quite naive. We use a number of science fiction benchmarks to look for alien life, but these are all, in fact, flawed in some respects. The things we look for and we view as indicators may be completely redundant. Dyson structures, isotropic beacons, self-replicating probes, all of these are fundamentally flawed ideas, yet we still look with a biased eye towards them. 
the biggest fundamental flaw may well be that of the Type 3 galactic civilization on the Kardashev scale. We have surveyed thousands of galaxies looking for galactic cohesion, but why would an intelligent civilization need to colonize an entire galaxy? Perhaps occupying more than a few solar systems is needless. Even with one trillion humans, we wouldn't even need a fraction of the total expanse of this galaxy. It would also take millions of years to colonize, and that's only if everything went according to plan 400 billion times over. If intelligent life is like us, with a finite period of merely a few decades where they are fit to travel in space, exploring a galaxy would be grossly impractical. A galactic civilization would also need to crack the issue of travelling faster than the speed of light, but perhaps faster than light travel is truly impossible and our ideas of wormholes are just completely overblown. Even within a finite area such as a galaxy, light speed is too slow to be fit for purpose. Would there really be any point in colonising an entire galaxy at this pace? If you want to take anything from these theories, just know that our methods of searching for extraterrestrial intelligence could be the issue, and not the targets themselves. However, there is one final theory, something that many people believe spells trouble for us as a race. It states that all civilizations do aim to go galactic, but they have all failed, and if true, this could mean that we are racing towards extinction faster than we know. This theory is known as the Great Filter. It is the idea that there is no galactic civilization because every spacefaring civilization reaches a barrier that causes them to go extinct or halt in progress, and as such, no species has ever passed it. Considering this with the Fermi Paradox, it leads you to two conclusions. Either we could be approaching that barrier and are set for inevitable doom, or we could become the first civilization to pass it. But what could that barrier be? Well, asteroids are a key candidate. Every solar system has millions of asteroids flying around, and it is commonplace for planets to be pounded with meteorites. This is what caused the dinosaurs to die out. Perhaps a civilization eventually runs out of time to spread out, and an asteroid sets them back to the Stone Age, if not wiping them out altogether. This might actually be a best case scenario for us. If we can reach Mars within the century, then we will dramatically improve our chances of surviving this eventuality. Something a bit more menacing is disease and superbugs. Even with improving treatments, something we have always been one step behind is disease. We have complex antibiotic treatments here on Earth, but these are beginning to wear off. As antibiotic overuse and misuse ensues, diseases are becoming resistant to antibiotics. Maybe one day a disease will become resistant enough to rip through the human race and wipe us out. Ebola was a very small scale early warning sign of this. Maybe our quest to the stars itself will be the catalyst. Back contamination is a concern that other celestial bodies may pose bugs that could quickly ravage life on Earth if transported back or swiftly infect anything that lands near it on other planets. Nuclear warfare is a common idea too. With all the nuclear weapons we've developed, even in the USA alone, we could wipe everything off the face of the Earth several times over. With so many weapons built, one instance of nuclear war could trigger a chain of political responses that sends us into a nuclear winter and potentially back to the Dark Ages. A chillingly realistic doom with the rising nuclear tensions in North Korea and Russia. There are other ideas. Some believe AI is always the last invention of an advanced civilization before it is accidentally outpaced and overthrown. But then, if that were the case, there would surely be more evidence of a ferocious, all-consuming robotic civilization. If there is a great filter, our only hope is that we have surpassed it and become the first spacefaring civilization. The quiet skies could either be taken as a good or bad sign of this, but until we detect some form of life on another planet which we can reconcile our own development against, we simply cannot be sure. Perhaps if there is no galactic civilization, yet we are on the cusp, then we have surpassed the filter. Perhaps we could have completed a miraculous escape. But then, perhaps a great filter is too general. After all, the universe is so vast and complex, it's somewhat hard to believe that a one-size-fits-all barrier exists. Perhaps it is arbitrary based on the system, and we are just an incredibly lucky species. Maybe intelligent life is so incredibly complex that one civilization per galaxy is too optimistic. Maybe intelligent life does exist, but it's so distant that we wouldn't have a prayer of detecting it. Perhaps life is completely different to what we know, and thus is undetectable to both parties, as what we believe to be indicators are completely redundant to the other side. Maybe it is the age after all, and we have been listening for just too insignificant a time to conclude on alien possibility. There are so many maybes when approaching these theories. There are so many plausible explanations of variable factors. The universe is so incomprehensibly vast that it is almost inescapably likely that some form of intelligent life, however advanced or primitive, exists somewhere in creation. 
but it could be so wildly different to ours that until we come into direct contact with extraterrestrial intelligence, we will never know for sure. And who knows when that day will be.